National Aging Institute, and I am kicking off a, another webinar here today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about niche marketing and really narrowing your marketing focus to attract more of your ideal client, because in the end, uh, we really want more of our ideal client. So you should be able to see my screen now. Um, again, I'm Dan Ritchie. I got my PhD at Purdue University. There's a uh, small picture there of Purdue University at the bottom of my slideshow. I'm in West Lafayette, Indiana. I've got a facility in Lafayette and uh, West Lafayette, so we have two facilities here. <clears throat> Hold on one second while I actually get the slideshow in presentation format. There we go. Okay, great. So we're going to primarily talk about uh, dialing in your marketing uh, so that you're really focusing on the clients you want. Now, if you're listening to this and you're saying, yeah, but my ideal client isn't the mature market, I want to go after 35 to 50 year olds, you're still going to learn a lot from this presentation because really whoever your ideal client is, you want to make sure you're narrowing in your marketing focus on that so you're not attracting uh, tire kickers, you're not attracting people that don't want your service. Uh, if you're trying to train people that are 60, your marketing shouldn't be attracting high school athletes. Uh, to give you an example, I spoke at Purdue University this week, and not a single college student there had ever heard of Miracles Fitness, had ever heard of me, and I said, that's absolutely just fine, because I don't want any of you to hear my marketing messages. So um, if you realize the wrong people are hearing your messages, you're probably doing your marketing wrong. Here's Cody. He's Vice President of Functional Aging Institute, my partner um, in this uh, operation. He's been in the industry over 20 years now. Uh, he's the older one of the two of us. Um, he's well published, presented all around the world, um, and involved in a whole bunch of things. So uh, enough about Cody. Uh, this is who you're listening to right now. Uh, I've been in the industry over 16 years now. I was honored with the PFP Personal Trainer of the Year back in 2014. Uh, and both of us are uh, Activate Brain and Body Advisory Board members, um, something we're really excited about coming in the future. And here's our advisory board. Um, now, some people have asked, why do you have a international advisory board? Now it's international because we have uh, one, one Canadian, I believe. Um, we really wanted people in the industry that we've been looking to and people that uh, we've seen doing this um, to, one, keep us accountable, but also give us a lot of their insights. Uh, Paul Holbrook has been running Age Performance out in Salt Lake City, Utah for over 10 years and really someone we've looked to um, as, as really kind of a leader and innovator in this area. Uh, Sue Grant is a fellow of Applied Functional Science at the Gray Institute and actually was our fall-proof instructor uh, back in 2005 and someone that, that we've looked to for a lot of group fitness uh, finesse. Lindsay Vastola obviously is going to help us in the PR area and um, editor of the PFP magazine. And I could go on and on about each of these, but um, really they're bringing a wealth of resources to us. Uh, they've volunteered their time, their expertise, their knowledge to, to help us make sure our certifications are as robust as we want them to be. Uh, and a couple of them are speaking at our summit in June, and uh, Diane has been doing certification workshops for us. So um, really a fantastic group that, that's adding a lot of, of quality to, to what we're about. Here's my crew. Uh, just to give you an idea, one of our favorite places in the world is Estes Park in Colorado, and we try to get out there every summer. It's amazing you get out there in the summertime, there's still snow on the ground. So. Um, one of our favorite places, this is a couple years ago, um, my, my red-headed oldest son there in front of me is actually now taller than me, so he's uh, a little over 6'2", and I don't think I can carry my little guy in a backpack anymore. So, so that's my crew. Um, one of the things I try to tell people in the fitness industry is, um, you know, there really are a lot of people out there that want to help you. Uh, there are a lot of people that want to work with you, a lot of people that want to be your... Um, you know, your colleague, your friend, your aide, um, and, and even people that, you know, you think aren't similar in terms of what you're doing uh, actually can wind up being really, really helpful. So um, so I, I put this up here just, just to kind of remind you that, you know, if you go looking for a friend, um, you're going to find they're very scarce. But if you go out to befriend someone or become a friend, you'll, you'll tend to find them everywhere. And 
I found this to be very true in the fitness industry. Um, you know, if I go out looking to build relationships with people, um, it, it, it's really quite easy to find. Um, if you can dream it, then you can achieve it. You'll get all you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And I've really built my fitness business philosophy on that Zig Ziglar quote, um, which really is the golden rule, right? If we treat people the way we want to be treated, um, eventually our, our businesses will be rewarded for that. So really a great kind of motto to, to live by. So um, let's jump in to some of the marketing stuff, right? Now, this can apply to inf information products. Um, it, can, it can be a sale of a physical product. Um, it's certainly, we're going to be mostly talking about marketing strategies and how it improves conversion. Um, but in the end, we're really talking about two strategies for marketing, right? We either want more customers or we want more dollars per customer. There really isn't any other um, formula, right? We either have to have more more customers or more dollars per customer. And uh, th these really are the two, two strategies for, for growing your revenues and growing your business. So how do we get more of our ideal client or our ideal customer? Um, our ideal customer, I jokingly will say, is the one who pays double what we charge, always shows up with positive energy, and refers their friends who really want to pay triple, right? Now, you might be laughing and saying, yeah, but those people don't exist. But the reality is our ideal customers are people who would pay more for our service. In fact, they think our service is a great value. They say, you know, you really... They're the people that come to us and say, you know, you really could charge more for this, and I would pay it. Um, they always show up positive and enthusiastic, right? I mean, these are the people that, I mean, they're just dream clients, right? And anyone they refer always shows up and is happy to pay, right? And in fact, they're not the people that show up and say, well, how much does this cost? I, I can't believe my, um, my friends are paying this, right? Um, so... Really, when we think about ideal customer, we have to really define it, right? And so I tell people, go back and take a look at your clients because there are probably a small number that are your absolutely best clients. Like if I could just have 10 more Joyce's, right? Uh, I think of a client of ours, Joyce, who's 82, who is an absolute raving fan. In fact, she tells her physician, why don't you send more of your patients here? Why don't we have more people in their 70s and 80s working out at Miracles Fitness? I mean, she she sends us her friends whenever uh, she possibly can. Um, you know, just just that absolute joy person who gets it, loves being here, you know, loves challenges, loves competitions. This week she did a 100 pull-up competition with one of our male personal trainers and, and just about wore him out. I think he was so sore the next day. Um, Obviously, she didn't have to do traditional pull-ups. She was doing uh, modified pull-ups with a uh, suspension training system. But uh, but that's kind of the picture, right? <clears throat> so your target or your ideal client, you have to define them as detailed as possible. So age, gender, income, education, but those really aren't enough, right? So you can't tell me, well, my, my best customer is a 55-year-old female that's highly educated and makes a lot of money. Well, okay, well, sure, we, we probably all would like that ideal client. But you need to know where they live. You know, what neighborhoods are they predominantly living in? Where do they shop? Where do they frequent? Where do they eat? Where do they play? Where do they go to church, worship, clubs they're in, charity organizations, boards they're a part of, et cetera, et cetera, right? You need to know all of these things. You need to know how many kids they have. Are they married, divorced, singled, widowed? Um, you should be able to define your client much, much more specifically, much more narrowly. So my ideal client, to give you an example, is a white woman who's 57. She has a college degree, a graduate degree preferred. She's got two to three kids out of the house. She's got five to six grandkids. She's got an income, household income, over 100000 She's married, and she lives in one of these three neighborhoods. Uh, now, these are three neighborhoods I know where my best ideal clients come from. Uh, my best ideal clients are married. Uh, my best ideal clients in my market are white. Uh, we're in a predominantly white market. Um, so I can be very specific as to what my absolute best ideal client is. Uh, and then I could go on and tell you um, where she goes for coffee, uh, where she goes shopping for clothes. Uh, across the street from us is a shopping center where there's a Talbot's and a Chico's. 
my ideal clients shop there. Uh, they go to Camille's and they go to Starbucks and they go to Panera Bread. Uh, those are close by within a few minutes of our facility and popular places for women uh, that are my ideal clients. So you need to really narrow that in. So stop thinking right now, and if you've been thinking this, and a lot of us have as trainers, right? Stop thinking right now, well, I can train anyone who comes in. Well, sure, maybe you can, but the reality is you shouldn't. Start focusing on who you train best, who you want to train, and focus all your energy and marketing dollars there because the mistake we make as trainers is thinking, well, I can train anyone. And I, I would actually argue that that's not true. Um, you know, in the past I've trained NFL prospects. I honestly can't train NFL prospects as well as somebody who trains NFL prospects all the time, right? There's no way I'm going to give them as good uh, a training experience as they need to make it to the next level because I train women in their 50s and 60s. Um, same thing for the guy who trains NFL prospects. He's not going to train people in their 50s and 60s as well as we can here at our facility. So focus in on who you train best, who you want to train, where your passions are, and focus then your energy and marketing dollars there. Even if you're not spending much money, focus your energy in attracting more of those clients. So I'm going to give you some examples of some unique niche clients, right? Because they're not all the same. Uh, your ideal client could be very different from mine. So Samantha Taylor uh, is a personal trainer in the Tampa area, and her focus is Christian women. Um, no men allowed in her facility, and there's a strong emphasis for Christian women. She's not shy about her faith. She's got a cross on display. They play only Christian music. Um, now, do they take women that aren't Christians? Yes, you don't have to sign a statement of faith or declare that you're a Christian to be there, but she strongly markets to Christian women and strongly emphasizes that her facility is a fitness facility, a personal training facility for Christian women. So it obviously sets her apart uh, in that niche in the Tampa area, and she's focused on very high income. Her costs are very, very high. Uh, small group personal training packages in the four to five hundred dollars a month, one on one, in the eight to thousand dollar a month range. She's got clients that are paying ten to twelve thousand dollars on an annual basis, uh, but she's focused in on a tight niche and she's looking at women in the 30 to 55 age range, and, and that's where she's stayed, and that's where she's been very, very successful. Here's a totally different example, right? Uh, Corporal Francis, friend of mine up in Canada, runs an outdoor boot camp year-round in Canada. Now, to me, that's a little crazy, um, and to you, it might be a little crazy, um, but it works for him. Um, I think he's uh, actually recently changed the name to Fit Core Boot Camp. And I had a conversation with him one time, and I said, well, well, Sean, tell me who your ideal client is. And he honestly, um, really all he could come up with was someone who's tough and thrill-seeking and a little bit nuts. And I said, well, I agree on a little bit nuts if they're doing outdoor boot camp year-round. Uh, he thought it was men and women, um, but when he went back and really – dug in and looked at his clientele, he realized his ideal client was a 40 to 45 year old woman. And it was really someone who missed sort of the camaraderie of team sports. So it was someone who was a, a past high school athlete or part of a, a team uh, that really wanted this team camaraderie uh, feeling. And uh, I think this feeling of doing someone that, uh, doing something that was a little bit outside the norm, right? Like they wanted to to kind of regain their, their youthful toughness, their, their kind of tenacity, their team aspect. And, you know, doing an outdoor boot camp year-round in, in Canada certainly would fit that bill, right? So um, he quickly realized his, his ideal client what was not male. It wasn't post-military. It wasn't, um, you know, hardcore adventure seekers. It, it really was this 40 to 45-year-old woman who was just looking for kind of an outside-the-box, thrilling, fun team atmosphere. And once he dialed that in, his business grew even more. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a YouTube uh, video later um, that, that kind of kind of draws some of this in, and we're going to visit our Facebook page as well. <clears throat> so things right now for you to, to be working on to, to really be able to 
dial in your ideal client, right? Okay, so this is your homework. Here's your to-do list. Think of your five to ten absolute best clients. If you only have ten clients, then narrow it down to your best two or three, okay? You want to really narrow this down into who is the most valuable client, but also your most enjoyable. That's, that's really key. So it needs to be a combination of most valuable and most enjoyable. Now, you need to write down everything you know about them and then learn more, right? Survey them, ask them, where do you like to go out to lunch? Where do you like to go out to dinner? Where do you shop for clothes? Where, where do you go for coffee? Where do you go to the grocery store? Where do you go for massage? Where do you pick your grandkids up from school? Where, what neighborhoods do you live in? Find all these things out. You need to know these things because then those are places you can start popping up. All of a sudden, you've got a coupon at the local coffee shop or you're figuring out a way to do a cross promotion with the manager of that clothing store. Um, we trained the manager of Chico's across the street for a significant discount for several years. And guess what? She became a raving fan, and she told all the women in Chico's about us. Chico's is a women's clothing store only. There's not going to be any men in there unless they're shopping for their wives, which um, by and large, most of the women shopping in Chico's are over the age of 50. It was a great strategy for us, right? So every woman that shopped in Chico's at some point or other was either going to run into a postcard from us or they were going to hear from the, the, the upfront store manager about Miracles Fitness and where she works out. And so um, that's just a simple strategy. If you know where these people are at, you know how to target to get to them. So stop trying to be average to everyone and start being extraordinary to a select few. I'll say that again. So stop trying to be that trainer that trains everyone, okay? So if your business card says you do weight loss, sport performance, high intensity, bodybuilding, and nine different fitness things, stop doing that because uh, that means you're really trying to be average to everyone. Start being extraordinary to a select few. So if we think about niche marketing and what a niche is, Okay, it's a position particularly suitable for the person occupying it, right? Like he found his niche in politics. So find your niche in the fitness industry. Find your niche for what clients you can train the best, what clients you enjoy to train the most. But also they have to be valuable clients, right? We can't just say, well, I want to train um, the next high school athlete that's trying to get into the NFL. Well, there aren't very many of those guys, unfortunately, that can become clients, right? Or if you say, well, I want to train high school female athletes that want to get Division I scholarships. It's just too small of a niche, most likely for you to make uh, a good living. Unless you're in a really big market where there are a lot of high school athletes, that's going to be a tough business to do. Um, so <clears throat> you want to make sure you're going after a distinct segment of the market. Some people go after older men. Some people go after older women. Some people go after a combination. You may want to focus more on knee rehabilitation, post-hip uh, surgery rehabilitation. You can focus on a little bit older segment of the market. Paul Holbrook, um, age performance out in Salt Lake City, his average age client is 70. Uh, he's going after about a 10 to 15 year older client than we are here at Miracles Fitness. And that's fine. That served him very well. Guess what? He closes his facility at 5 p.m. every day. Uh, he, leaves, he leaves work at 2.30 or 3 most days, and he has a couple trainers that stay and train with the late, what they call the late clients, those clients that come in at 4 and 4.30, and they don't see anyone after 5. Well, he's serving a distinct segment of the market, right? He's not serving anyone that wants to work out after work. He's just not doing it, and, uh, and that's allowed him to be very successful being small and specialized to a specific niche. <clears throat> All right. So let's run through a couple different effective strategies. And I'm even going to run through, because I think we have to, we're going to run through some ineffective strategies just so you see some of those. So when you think about your marketing focus, um, obviously we have to take an individualized approach. That's really what I've been talking about, dialing in who is the individual you want to reach. So instead of your marketing approach being like a shotgun, it needs to be very targeted, right? Um, obviously, we also have to then have um, an environment that supports that. So if I'm going to target a 57-year-old female who is white, highly educated, and high income, 
um, my gym can't be a hardcore heavy metal dungeon atmosphere or it's going to tend to not attract her but repel her, right? It's not really going to create the appropriate environment. It's not going to meet social and emotional needs. So we have to make sure that, you know, who we're marketing to matches then obviously the business we're running. So, um, you know, if you want to attract men in their 50s, um, that sort of environment might work just fine. You know, if you want men in their 50s that want a, you know, heavy testosterone atmosphere and, you know, still kind of regaining my youth, that might work just fine and it's going to tend to repel women who you obviously don't want to train. Diversity really is the rule and this is why I believe there are actually several niches in the aging boomer market. Um, because aging processes are so diverse, functional abilities are so diverse, disease conditions are so diverse, uh, I think you can make carve out a pretty nice niche just in knee and hip pain, pre-knee and hip replacement exercise, post-knee and hip replacement exercise, obviously gender, you know, you can go after just women, you can go after just men. Um, life experiences are going to be vastly different. Uh, socioeconomic status is even diverse. Um, for the most part, we're going to be focusing on the higher socioeconomic status. Um, and then even marital and living status obviously is, is diverse. As we get over the age of 60, we start to see more and more people that are, are, are widowed and, you know, they've lost their significant other and, and obviously people in their 50s and 60s could be divorced as well. This graph just kind of shows you how there is such a huge wide range, right, of functional capacity. Um, so much so where some of us could say, you know, I really want to work with the frail older clients, you know, those people over 75, 80 years old that are, you know, with a walker and they're just trying as hard as they can to maintain their independence. Maybe they've crossed the disability threshold uh, as opposed to some of us are saying, hey, I want to work with the 50 and 60 year olds who are high functioning. They still want to do athletic things. They still want to be competitive. They're still playing golf. They're still playing softball. They're still cycling. They're still playing tennis, you know, whatever it is. Um, there's a huge range, right? And in fact, some of our 75-year-old clients can do amazing things compared to an average 60-year-old. And uh, over over the aging spectrum, we're going to see a, a really a wide range in that, which um, does allow you, um, a, I say, a wide range of freedom in terms of what's going to be your ideal client. Uh, again, like I said, our ideal client is, is a woman in her mid-50s. Uh, Paul Holbrook out in Utah, you know, his average age is 70. They're focusing on a little bit older, more retired crowd, and, uh, and you really can go uh, a multitude of directions with that. Just briefly, when we think about functional levels, uh, for the most part, most of us are going to be working with the independent and the physically fit. By and large, that's, that's simply where we're going to be. Now, the frail populations, those that are starting to have some some difficulties with the independent activities of daily living, um, you know, are certainly going to come seek out our services. Um, the dependent, by and large, these are people that can't do basic activities of daily living like walking, bathing, dressing, eating, transferring. For the most part, they're going to be at permanent home care, either at home or in an institution. So for the most part, we're not going to be working with that population. The elite will certainly see some of these individuals as well, people that are still competing, um, you know, some of these are your long distance competitors in terms of cycling and running and competing in senior Olympics. Um, but certainly the physically fit and the independent is going to be our dominant uh, largest client base. So let's look at how a large uh, retirement conglomerate, um, AIG Sun America, defined some of the aging population as we think about niching down and how do we define our target market. Okay, so this is a retirement um, program and they looked at, okay, there are, if we break down boomers and seniors into categories, um, and they're primarily looking at people, I believe, 50 to 70, um, one size doesn't really fit all, right? So they have four categories that they put people in. Ageless explorers, about a quarter of them. Live for today's, about another quarter. Sick and tired, it's almost a third. And comfortably content. Now, I would tell you, um, really, three out of four of these are really great potential clients, and we go after all three of these. Live for today's, ageless explorers, and comfortably content. So let's break that down a little bit. Ageless explorers, 
you know, really, are, these are, um, you know, almost your ideal over 55 client, right? The 78% of them say they will never feel old inside, right? Like, I'm never getting old, right? I'll never feel elderly. More than three quarters of them are extremely knowledgeable about their financial security, right? They're not pessimistic about the future. This is your high wealth, high income, strong financial, and not only that, they also have a positive outlook on aging and their physical health, right? Um, these are going to be our absolute best of the best ideal clients, right? Because they want to be able to enjoy all the solid finances they've set up for retirement, and they know that being ageless is a key to that. <clears throat> Comfortably content, uh, about 20% 20, 20 of those 55 plus. A little bit tougher here. We've got to work a little bit harder to get them, right? Because they're perfectly happy with their life and they want nothing to change. So they're really not looking to be disturbed. Um, they're not necessarily looking for an exercise program. 69% um, of them desire to relax and do nothing. Most travel and participate in some sort of recreational activity. So they're not necessarily looking to take up an exercise program. So here's where some interruption marketing strategies to speak into their values really are key, right? They're perfectly happy with their life and they want nothing to change. So here's where we step into that mindset of, well, what are you doing to ensure that nothing in your life changes, right? Um, they're not as big a go-getters as the Ageless Explorers. Um, financially, they're pretty strong. Um, they're not quite as uh, robust as the Ageless Explorers. Um, they're likely to have re received some sort of um, assistance from someone in terms of advice for lifestyle needs, but they're really quite satisfied. Um, and retirement is really, hey, this is just great. I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm chilling. I'm, I'm just enjoying life, right? And so. It's, it's not a huge challenge, but we have to realize they need some sort of interruption to realize you want to stay perfectly happy for as many years as you possibly can, and exercise can really help with that. So another great uh, potential ideal client. Sick and tired, um, really not going to be people that are going to seek out our services. Uh, unfortunately, this is the segment of the aging population that uh, has sort of bought into that fixed income, poor health mentality. 54% um, feel that life is not as fulfilling as they imagined it would be. 56% feel pessimistic about their future. Uh, and few are active in physical activity. Um, they tend to be more withdrawing from society and eventually leading towards people who are very shut in and, and not engaged with community. And that, unfortunately, they're not obviously going to be a great ideal client. Did I skip the live for today's? Oh, I did. I jumped over the live for today. Sorry about that. So the live for today's, I mean, these people are the life of the party, right? They're fun. They're adventuresome. Um, they're not quite as financially strong as the comfortably content or the ageless explorers. Um, so there's a little anxiety about not having saved enough money, but they're they're still they're looking to have fun. They they would describe themselves as adventuresome. Uh, they're just not as financially strong. So they're not in the top half of the financial strength. Uh, and 72% of them are a little worried that they won't have enough money saved for retirement. But again, they're living for today, right? I mean, they're going to go on that trip. They're going to have fun. And so, again, this is someone that can become a great client because they're living for today. And so when they realize your fitness program is going to serve their needs today, um, they're going to take the plunge on that because they're not necessarily uh, thinking about their finances five years down the road or ten years down the road. In fact, if you can convince them that the exercise program you have for them is going to help them enjoy today better, you know, and their trip next week better, it's going to help them be more adventuresome, um, you're going to be able to uh, bring them on as a great client. And let's keep in mind, vast majority of people, though, over the age of 55 plus uh, are in a significantly wealthier stage of life than people under the age of 40. And so, even uh, the live for today's, while they're not as wealthy as the ageless explorers are comfortably content, they're still financially strong. Okay, so that just kind of gives a breakdown of kind of the baby boomer and an older generation. Here's just kind of a funny slide to show the difference between men and women, right? So 
you want to make sure your marketing is meeting social and emotional needs. Okay, so it, it can't just, especially for for the mature market, it, it can't just be about some sort of fitness program. It has to be meeting a, a social and emotional need for them. So here's an image of obviously an older uh, demographic. You're going to tend to see that image immediately. You see two women that you know clearly look over 70, and you might say, hey, the average age of this fitness class has got to be 65 to 75, right? Um, but it's going to meet uh, sort of this social and emotional well-being for a lot of women this age who are sort of nervous or uncomfortable about exercise, right? This particular environment, we've got an instructor, uh, but we've got several um, assistants that are there as well, so lots of one-on-one -on -one attention there. Again, understanding the older adult. See, hear, feel, and interpret. So I'm going to show you some things that we as fitness professionals, we just aren't seeing it. We're not feeling it because these are places we're comfortable, right? So you show this image to a lot of older clients, especially people over the age of 65, and they see overwhelm. They see intimidation. They walk out onto the facility and they hear lots of noise, too much going on. We see what looks like a playground, right? Like a whole bunch of equipment that, that we could use and you know all kinds of different things, right? Um, but a lot of older clients aren't necessarily comfortable with this environment. Again, similar kind of images, right? I, I feel intimidated. I feel overwhelmed. Um, you know, most of us in the fitness industry perfectly comfortable in an environment like this, right? We can step foot in a gigantic health club and not feel uncomfortable or intimidated. A lot of older clients very overwhelmed by this, too much going on. So here's a marketing message that 24-Hour Fitness put out. When they come, they'll eat the fat ones first. Now, 24-Hour Fitness actually got strongly criticized for this. They even got protested uh, by a lot of overweight people. Um, they actually were trying to attract people that needed to lose weight, um, but their marketing message significantly backfired here because people actually found it offensive. Here's one that's funny. I can't believe somebody would have put this up on a billboard. Again, your message is going to speak very clearly to your ideal client. So this is going to tend to obviously repel anyone over the age of 50, um, except for maybe the rare case of a, a male over 50 that you know still wants to be a bodybuilder. So here are some of your your typical fitness kind of marketing from certainly the 90s, uh, and and this actually is a, an ad from about 2005. Um, so the 90s into the early 2000s, a lot of sort of this nightclub mentality, right? It's sort of like, is she going for a workout, or uh, I'm not sure exactly. So um, these kind of images are not going to work for the mature market, right? In fact, they're going to tend to repel them. Um, mature clients still think fitness centers are like this. In fact, they even come into my facility and think there's going to be a bunch of ha what they would call half-naked women like this gal on the, the brochure here, and that's what they think of fitness centers. So. Unless your facility is like that, you don't want to be portraying that image with your business card, with your flyers, um, with your marketing images. Here's something that's a lot softer, something we used early on that worked really well for us. Um, this woman's clearly in her late 50s to even late 60s. In fact, you really don't know, right? You could you could have a woman, um, I mean, she could be 70. Um, but the reality is it's going to make people 55 to 75 pretty comfortable with her. Uh, she's not going to intimidate women away. You know, we even say on there, you won't find any muscle heads revealing attire or a no pain, no gain attitude. So if you're a woman or just over the age of 40 and are hesitant about joining a health club, Visit Miracles Fitness will make you feel right at home, right? And the headline catches people's attention. Ever felt like you needed to get in shape before? You could join a health club. How many people have you ever heard say that, right? Very common thing that people are thinking, right? A, a radio ad we used to tie in with this is your heart's pounding, your, your palms are sweating, and then you get up the courage to open the door to step into the fitness center, right? Like people are afraid to even set foot in health clubs because they're not in good enough shape. Always liked this line. We don't use this anymore as we've, as we've focused in on 
on 50 and 60 year olds, but Americans are living longer than ever and bingo gets old real fast. Over the hill is no longer a stage in life, it's a goal, right? And you can tell these four people are clearly in their 50s and 60s. If life really begins at 50, shouldn't you be in the best shape of your life at 65? I still use this one a lot, still use this in some of our messaging because uh, this speaks to a lot of 55 to 70 year olds, right? And you hear people saying this, right? Oh, well, life really begins at 50. Huh? And there's a lot of reasons for that, right? Like for the most part, um, you've had success in your career, you've started to build some financial independence, your kids by and large are getting off on their own, so you have less demands in terms of raising kids. For the most part, not, not everyone, but um, the reality is that 50 things are you know, starting to, to come into shape in terms of you know, what you might want to do with for the next 20, 25 years. So shouldn't you be in the best shape of your life at 65? It's a strong message for a lot of people in their 50s and 60s. All right, I want to show a um, quick YouTube video to you. So I'm going to turn my screen off for just a second. Um, what I want to show you is uh, a couple of our um, clients um, working out. And the, the Dream Rangers video here, there's a link here. Um, I want you to, to grab that. Um, I want you to watch that later. That's a really powerful video. Um, showed that to several hundred trainers at a meeting one time. Um, so jot that down if you can. Um, but I'm going to show you, just, just real quick here, I'm going to show you a video from our facility. So I'm going to turn my screen off for a second while I jump over to that. So hold on with me for just one second. Um, but the, the Dream Rangers video is, it, it, you have to um, kind of trust me on that, but it's a really powerful um, video. The interesting thing is the entire um, video is subtitled. Um, but I think that almost adds to the power of it. Um, and it's several um, guys in Taiwan, I believe, that uh, just decide they're not going to take aging the way everybody expects them to take aging. And they're going to take up motorcycle riding again like they did in their youth. And why shouldn't they, right? Um, so it's a really, really powerful video. Um, so I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you something real quick here, um, and then you you guys can find this later. So I'm going to go back to showing my screen here. Um, so this is uh, Gunther working out at our facility. And the reason I want to show this to you is by, by showing some videos of some of your ideal clients and what they can aspire to, you can start to communicate kind of what your facility is about. So I've, sh I've shown this uh, video a number of different places. And if you want to hear it, you can go to our Miracles Fitness page. Uh, YouTube Miracles Fitness is our channel. Uh, Gunther's 82. Um, but the, the reality is when people see him moving, they don't tend to think of an 82-year-old, right? I mean, I showed you. Uh, him walking on his hands and, and doing plank up downs and here he is doing lunges and uh, I mean he doesn't uh, move like we think of an 82 year old at least like the average 82 year old thinks perhaps and so um, by showing some of these videos um, it just demonstrates to people what we expect people can do and what we expect they can aspire to um, and then immediately following after him we have a home balance workout where I'm working with one of my trainers and, and essentially showing people, hey, what you can do at home and kind of giving people tips. Um, and then we've got some other uh, amazing clients uh, in there as well. Jesse, I jumped down to this video. Um, Jesse's in her 80s and, and, and does push-ups really, really quite, quite well. In fact, I would argue a lot of women half her age could not do push-ups as well as she does. Um, especially considering she's got a couple of cracked ribs while she's demonstrating this. She was about four weeks uh, post-cracked ribs on this. So um, so just, just some things I wanted to show you. You want to make sure that your ideal client, and in some cases, uh, you know, I want more 80-year-old clients who are saying, I want to be like Gunter, I want to be like Jesse. Um, but I want people in their 60s and 70s to see that and go, wow, I can't do that. 
these guys are doing amazing things for people in their 80s. I, I got to get in there because that's what I want my 80s to look like. Okay, so just just kind of some samples there. Again, if you want um, if you want more uh, YouTube stuff from us, just jump to our Miracles Fitness uh, channel. All right, let's jump back to the PowerPoint and finish up. Um, so again, I want you to have a chance to jot this down because I do want you to go to YouTube. So you're looking at youtube.com slash watch question mark V equals VKSDBSVAM6G. Powerful video. I'm going to put it up on our Facebook page after the webinar so you can go to our Functional Age Institute Facebook page and check out the Dream Ranger video which Cody and I have used at a number of presentations and it really just speaks to the power of what aging can look like, what I think sometimes people um, assume aging should be and then sort of this aha moment where these guys say this is not how we have to age, let's do it differently. It's a really, really powerful video. You might need to have your tissues ready. Okay. Quick finish here as we wrap up, and since there's only 10 of you on while we're doing this live, I'll take some questions. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and start posting those in the chat box, and I'll get to those um, for those of you watching this on the recording. Uh, sorry, you won't be able to ask questions, so um, but you'll benefit from a couple of questions that people do ask. So, um, so just kind of your homework reminder: what you need to do. <clears throat> So remember, um, people people try to sometimes make things too complex, right? They think there's a whole bunch of different things to be doing. There's only two ways to make more money. You either have to have more customers or more money per customer. Now you can come up with a variety of variables on that, but the reality is it's those two things. That's all there is to it. Um, you have to have more customers or more money from each customer. Uh, the reality is that's that, that's why you you could you could go from 100 customers to 10 customers and make more money if you're getting more money per customer. In fact, we did did that here at our location when we stopped selling health club membership in 2010 and went to strictly small group training membership. Uh, we reduced our number of customers, but we significantly increased our more money per customer uh, times a factor of three. Right, we went from $45 a month health club membership to 149 a month training membership. Um, and so we didn't need as many customers. If you get more of your ideal customer, you should be able to charge more. And this is why I say again, stop training everyone and start training the best of the best clients that you want. Because when you dial in to who your ideal customer is, you'll be able to charge more. Because those people really want your service, they really like what you're doing for them, and they're happy to pay a little bit more. Whether that's 5%, 10%, 25% more, um, we've continued to raise our prices and, and not have complaints on price point um, because we're going after our ideal customer. Now, obviously, you can't charge outlandish, outrageous amounts. Um, but when you try to train everyone, you have a whole bunch of people that say your service is too expensive or can't afford you. When you focus in on the people that, that want your service and can afford your service, um, your, your prices can get a lot better. If you create a unique niche, you become the local expert in that niche, right? You become the best of the best at training that niche. So um, because of that, you should automatically be able to charge more for your product or service. I mean, if you're the only functional aging specialist in your market, you're the only one that is a local expert at functional aging training. So you should be able to charge a little bit more than the certified trainer down the street. So number one, look at how you can immediately um, raise your prices. and you know, one of those ways is to make sure that you're the distinct expert in your niche, in your area, um, in, in whatever you want to, to really carve out as your specialty. Find some key influencers. Train TV news anchors if you can, for free or for trade. Uh, we trained TV news anchors here for years, uh, about five years. Just, just last year we stopped, unfortunately. They didn't want to trade anymore. Um, they never paid. Uh, we traded. We traded. They uh, they would they would come here. We would train them. They'd give us some some free TV spots. It was a great trade off for us. 
uh, we got to, to train some key influencers. So just some examples of, of maybe some potential key influencers in your market, you know, could be Mercedes and BMW managers. Um, find a networking group. I've been in a BNI group now for eight years. Extremely powerful, right? Because I know some significant people of influence from the architects in town building the, the latest projects to, you know, even a even a plumber. Um, you know, people that own other local businesses are local influencers. So get connected to those people. Uh, get out of your gym every once in a while. Network. Get connected with people of influence. Get to know your ideal customer, right? Take them to lunch. Take them to coffee. You know, find out more about them. Learn their habits, their preferences, their pain points, their motivations, their dreams, their goals. The more you learn to understand their pain points and their motivations, the easier it is for you to sell and market to them better. Um, it's especially true if you're a trainer under the age of 45. Uh, even more so if you're under the age of 35 because there's a generational difference in terms of how you view the world what you value versus what they value. And so you have to learn uh, their motivations, their dreams, their pain points so you can market more effectively to those messages. That's going to absolutely help you sell better to them, market better to them, communicate better to them so there's not a disconnect. Um, and then, of course, read, read, and read some more, right? I'm so glad you're on this today or you know someday watching this recording because learning, uh, reading, studying this market is, is absolutely going to help you. So. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of books here in just a minute. Personal growth is absolutely critical, especially if you're a younger trainer and you want to train people over the age of 50. You have better be developing yourself so they'll take you seriously. So who you are in five years will be shaped largely by the relationships in your life, right? The people who you surround yourself with, the people who you know and those who you will meet over the next five years are going to shape who you become five years from now. The other significant thing will be the books you read. If you read nothing between now and 2020, um, your thought process is your mind. Your um, thinking really is not going to grow much, right? So don't expect significant changes if you're not reading, studying, learning. Okay? Doesn't mean you have to read. Audiobooks are, are perfectly uh, acceptable. Uh, some people don't read as well as others. Audiobooks are great. Um, there are obviously other ways to learn. I listen to audiobooks uh, myself. So you didn't think you'd get out of uh, a PhD webinar without a suggested reading list, did you? So here's a, here's a couple that I think will help you right away. So No BS Marketing to the Affluent by Dan Kennedy. Um, I also have sitting here on my desk No BS Marketing to Boomers and Seniors. That's, that's an absolute must as well. So uh, No BS Marketing to the Affluent, No BS Marketing to Boomers and Seniors by Dan Kennedy. Getting Everything You Can Out of All You've Got by Jay Abraham. I need to reread this one. Read this one a couple years ago. Oh my goodness, he gave me a gigantic list of, hey, this is what this is where your business is at. You're not getting everything you can out of out of all you you've got. So, um, tremendous book with a, a lot of to-do lists and action items. Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Tremendous book. Um, very very good on leadership, especially if you're leading a business, even if you're a small operation. If you're leading anyone one, two, or three people, you need this book. Uh, it will even help you in terms of influencing clients. So number of laws of influence um, in that book in terms of how we influence people, motivate people, help people. Um, it, it, it's a tremendous book. Can't recommend that any more highly. Uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker, uh, audio book that I picked up several years ago. Very, very powerful um, book in terms of how we view money. Uh, unfortunately, some of us have a negative view of money. Uh, and that's hurting our business. Um, if, if we view money um, uh, as you know, acquiring money is wrong or building wealth is wrong or trying to get rich is wrong and we have negative views of rich people, um, it, it can cloud our judgment in terms of how we transact money. Uh, in fact, it can wind up, and I've seen trainers do this, they simply feel guilty about charging too much for their service. And so it, it's really, I think it's about a three-hour audio book uh, to read it. Um, it's, it's pretty short. It's pretty sweet. Um, tremendous. Um, really eye-opening for Cody and I after the two of us listened to it and then talked through it. We realized that, that we had quite different views of money. Uh, so if you have a business partner, I, I, would, I would require the two of you to go through this together because if, if you're tied to someone in a business partnership, 
and your views of money are wildly different, uh, you're going to struggle. In fact, if one of your business partners thinks um, to be successful and to be wealthy and to be rich is evil, and the other one thinks the opposite, you're you're going to always be at odds. And so, um, so really, really great, great resource. Um, again, all of these things just jump back here. No BS Marketing to the Affluent by Dan Kennedy. Got Getting Everything You Can Out All You Got by Jay Abraham. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell and The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. All these things you can find uh, probably at your library. They're, they're top sellers and for sure on Amazon, very cheap. I just picked up a book by John Maxwell. Um, his next leadership book, I think it's about five bucks on Amazon, so cheap resources. Just real quick before I get to your questions, um, the Advanced Functional Aging Specialist is coming up again in April. So if you have interest in that, April 10th and 11th, um, uh, really the, the main emphasis there is the two days of training and coaching here uh, with myself and Cody at our facilities. You get to learn every aspect of our business. Um, if you've attended any other workshops or done any other certifications, we reduce that from the cost. And we only take a max of 15 people, and, and we're, we'll probably actually cap it at 12 because 15 would be just a little crowded. So. Um, if you want more info on that, um, you can go to our website, functionalagentinstitute.com, and then just click on the certifications tab. All right. So if you haven't liked us on Facebook, please do. I'm going to put that Dream Rangers video up there so you can find it if you didn't get that. Um, so you can find us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, with that, um, give you a couple of contact things here. If you have any questions for me, here's my email. Uh, it's usually me that responds, though Sarah, my assistant, responds to some of those. Obviously, you can get more info on our website. And on our website, there is a complete manual on functional training for older adults and also uh, an hour video presentation um, by Cody on training the older market, functional circuits, and just all sorts of techniques and strategies and principles for training the older market. All right, that's the end of our slideshow. Uh, I want to jump to a couple of questions if you have any before we wrap up here today. So let me just see if people have put any questions up. Uh, hold on just a second. I'm having trouble getting it to display the chat board for me. All right, I stopped showing you my screen. Um, doesn't look like I have a overwhelming amount of questions or comments. So unless you guys have any questions or comments you want to throw in the box, I'm going to uh, get off the webinar here in just a minute. But thanks so much for attending today. And if you haven't got on the Functional Aging Summit early bird list. I encourage you to do that. I'm going to post that on our Facebook page as well. Uh, we have a two-day event coming up in Phoenix, um, June 12th and 13th. It's our first ever uh, two-day conference. Uh, we had a couple people, a couple people ask uh, if it's different from our certification workshop. It is absolutely different. It's actually a two-day fitness conference. We'll be going over the latest training techniques for mature clients, the latest marketing techniques, sales strategies, um, a nice balance of business and fitness. So there'll be uh, training techniques and business techniques as well. So 
Um, check out our Facebook page so you can get on that early bird list. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining us today. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um,